Hi, today we're going to go down memory lane with this historic nation, which was incorporated in 1939. Also, today we'll be at the 27th annual BCRA uh, picnic and Hall of Fame induction ceremonies. Then this evening we're going trackside to the Placerville Speedway at the El Dorado County Fairgrounds to watch the BCRA Mighty Midgets and Midget Lights. I'm Floyd Busby. I've been around BCRA for over 50 years. BCRA has quite a long and storied history. It was incorporated in 1939, but prior to that there were two midget racing organizations in Northern California. Of course the first professional race was held in June of 1933 at the uh, College Stadium, Hughes Stadium in Sacramento. Not long after that, STAR was formed, Short Track Racing Association, had a lot of really big names of its day. Uh, but after a couple of years, there was a bit of internal turmoil, and some people broke away and formed the Northern California Midget Racing Association. Uh, that was headed by a fellow named Joe Banzi. So those two groups ran tracks all over Northern and Central California, and into Reno, and so on and so forth. Uh, but in the very late uh, 30s, with the lack of tracks and uh, the fighting between the two organizations hurt the sport very much. And at one point there was actually no sanctioning body. Meanwhile, there was an organization called the Bay Cities Roadster Racing Association that raced roadsters. They were amateurs, but they raced at the half mile on the Oakland Speedway, which is built inside the big dirt oil mile, and so on. And at one point, about 1939, some of the uh, midget people who were not under uh, the guidance of an association went to BCRRA and asked if BCRRA could sanction some races with the midgets. At the same time, there were some uh, members of BCRRA who had taken an interest in midgets, so it was kind of a natural marriage. Uh, it was, as I say, incorporated in 1939, but it was still under BCRRA. It didn't become BCRA until about uh, 1941, actually during the Second World War, after it had started. And uh, they were working in anticipation of the end of the war so they could be organized. And through Sacramento it was re-incorporated. Uh, uh, or the corporation was changed to become Bay Cities Racing Association, which could be all-inclusive of almost any type of auto racing. The first champion of BCRA, but in reality again BCRRA, but the first midget champion was Bill Waldridge, and that was in 1942 in a very abbreviated season that had only seven races uh, due to the fact that after that seventh race uh, the go government uh, put an end to all motorsport because of the need for rubber and for gasoline for the war effort. Uh, racing started in 1945 following the war. The first races were held at a uh, municipal ballpark in Vallejo. And that first year the uh, champion emerged and it was Bob Barkheimer. Uh, Barkheimer later became a uh, business manager for a short stint. And then he branched out and he formed the uh, uh, California Racing Association, uh, which was stock cars. And there was a period there where he had over 20 tracks running at one time. Uh, and he also promoted midget races. He still loved the midgets. During those uh, early post-war years, uh, the midgets really flourished. A hundred and, uh, over 150 races one year. In 1948, they traveled to Mexico City and had a series of seven races in the National Stadium in Mexico City and had such drivers as uh, Freddie Agavation, um, Johnny Parsons, and so on. Uh, during that, a little sidebar, the first couple nights of racing when the uh, uh, drivers get used to the track, uh, apparently it was pretty good slam bang racing and the uh, Mexican audience really liked it because the promoter had advertised the midgets as death drivers. So they were expecting the goring of the bull, so to speak. After that second night, the races became quite tame as the drivers uh, learned the setup and learned the track. And it really wasn't uh, the kind of racing that uh, death drivers would, would uh, uh, include. 
So, uh, therefore, the promoter, when somebody got hurt, uh, and there were hardly any injuries, would make a big thing of it. Well, Ed Normie uh, blew a radiator hose and burned his leg. Not really seriously, but the promoter had the ambulance take him to the hospital. They wrapped him in bandages, had a photographer take pictures of him, um, uh, laying in the bed all wrapped, and put out that he was on his deathbed. Well, they decided the better part of valor was to put him on an airplane and send him home because he certainly couldn't go back to the track because he became uh, a casualty uh, of that race. So uh, he got kidded a lot in uh, years after the 1948 season. The, uh, among the great drivers of that time, of course, were people like Freddie Agabation, Johnny Baldwin, well, we came a little later, uh, Jerry Piper, a great uh, driver, uh, Ed Norm, as I mentioned, Marvin Burke. Marvin Burke never won a championship, but he came very close, real classy driver. Uh, Baldwin uh, topped the number of overall BCRA midget main event wins with 133. Uh, second was Agabation with 105, and then uh, a more modern-day driver of 79 was Hank Butcher. Our own Floyd Alves, who to this day, in his mid-70s, still drives, well-known in racing even after when he left basically, George Big, the uh, top uh, main event winner was George Bignotti, who later became chief mechanic uh, at Indianapolis and was very, very highly regarded. He had 144 wins. And in that uh, car owner category, a fellow named Jack London had 120. Now, Jack London himself is a whole story. Jack London became business manager uh, in uh, 1950 and for 20 years reigned as business manager. He left the post but came back because they needed him in 1972 through 74. Uh, Jack London was a, very interesting. Uh, he ran the organization more as a uh, totalitarian dictatorship, a la Bill France Sr., uh, but he got a lot done. And as the midgets went along in the 40s, uh, running many races towards the end of the 40s and into the 50s, uh, things began to go downhill. Uh, the hardtops came in, and everybody seemed to love the hardtops. And it, at this case, uh, early in the 50s, uh, a lot of organizations, regional organizations all around the United States collapsed. They didn't have a, couldn't get tracks, so on and so forth. And we have to give a lot of credit to both Jack London and Bob Barkheimer, who in some people's estimation, including mine, helped save BCRA from oblivion in the early 50s. Uh, Bob Barkheimer promoted at a number of different tracks with his uh, Cal Stock, later as I mentioned with NASCAR, and he and Jack would get together. Jack would call him and say, Barky, I, I need some races. And Barky would put on races on his track knowing that he'd be very fortunate to break even and probably lose money, and in many cases he did. So Jack London Bash, of course, is named after Jack London uh, because of his long service to the organization. And um, I, it should be realized that Jack London Square at the foot of Broadway in Oakland uh, has nothing to do with our Jack London. The Jack London Square is named after Jack London, the author. The uh, Hall of Fame has inducted many members over the years, and this year was its 27th annual event. The criteria, uh, which is voted on by the board, but the names are submitted by a panel of historians with BCRA. Uh, that criteria, of course, is uh, what over their uh, period of involvement uh, that they what they did for BCRA in the way of championships, wins, uh, mechanics, uh, so on and so forth. So uh, there is a criteria, and there is a, a nominating committee. The board of directors votes on them, and the board doesn't always put in everybody that the uh, committee submits. Of course, it fielded many excellent drivers. In the early days of the late 40s and the 50s, a number of those drivers went on to fame in the Indianapolis 500 and on the championship trail. Names like Freddie Agabation, Johnny Boyd, 
adhesion, and so on. Uh, also, I had mentioned before drivers like Marvin Burke and Ed Normie, Frankie Cavanaugh, uh, there was just Jerry Piper. Of course, uh, Agabation uh, went on to uh, Indy fame, ran, I believe it was 12 races, never won, came close, qualified on the pole with the famous Cummins Diesel, I believe that was 1952. Uh, of course, in more modern days, we don't send drivers to uh, Indianapolis. Uh, it's just a different world, uh, rear engine cars and the uh, normal oval tracks of short track racing as midgets and sprints do not feel many in the way of uh, drivers that run on the national circuit of the Indy cars and so publications that include BCRA is for instance The Mighty Midgets by Jack Fox. This came out quite some number of years ago. This includes midget racing all throughout the United States, not just BCRA, but of course it starts with that first race in Sacramento in 1933 and there's a big section in here pertaining to BCRA and the, the many stars that it uh, submitted. The BCRA Bible is BCRA the first 50 years. It spans from 1939 to 1989. This is by t author Tom Motter, and this includes a very, very detailed history over the 50-year span of BCRA. It's an extremely interesting book, and if you can find one, you'd be fortunate because it's been out of print for quite some time. Over the years, there's three different divisions uh, were installed with BCRA. The first was the hardtop division, and I remember at Bayshore Stadium back in the late 40s, Jack London brought four hardtops that he had built up to put on an exhibition race. People out here didn't know what a hardtop was. They were beginning to gain ground and popularity in the Midwest and the East Coast. And I remember coming out of the turn, uh, one of them lost the right front wheel, car dug down and did one quick flip. The people just went crazy. And that was the beginning of hardtop racing. Then many years later, BCRA began its vintage division with cars from uh, earlier eras. And uh, in more recent years, the midget light division. Uh, the midget lights are actually, in other areas of the country, uh, called mini sprints. But it was more apropos as being part of a midget organization to change them to midget lights. In other words, a smaller version of a midget, which are uh, powered by motorcycle engines up to 1200 cc, chain driven and so on. Other than that, they look just like a midget. And they run a lot of the tracks both with and without wings. Now wings. Uh, quite some years ago, uh, BCRA, the regular midgets, uh, went to wings and for about 15 years ran wings, uh, then uh, decided to do away with the wings and went back to non-wing racing, as it is today.